Hey, it's Medicosis Perfectionellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today we have another cardiac pharmacology mnemonic, dopamine versus dobutamine, used for CHF, because they increase your cardiac contractility. How do they work? They are sympathomimetic. Congestive heart failure is when you are literally full of water, edema, ascites, jugular venous distension, distension or of the hepatic capsule, wet crackles in your lung, you're full of water. And what are the drugs that are used for CHF? Cardiac glycosides, the bipyridines, the sympathomimetics, which is today's topic, and drugs that are not positive enotropics. So here is dopamine and dobutamine. Dopamine is agonist for D1 receptor, D2, these are dopamine receptors, beta and alpha these are adrenergic receptor why do we call them dopamine receptor because they are stimulated by dopamine why do we call these adrenergic receptor because they are stimulated by adrenaline which is epinephrine but here is the deal dopamine is d1 and d2 agonist but its d properties are greater than the beta properties are greater than the alpha agonist properties dobutamine however doesn't have any d's it's only beta 1 beta 2 and alpha the beta 1 is greater than the beta 2, and it has no dopamine agonist effects. This difference is going to be of an enormous importance. You know, in your nervous system, it's either somatic or autonomic, and then autonomic, it's either sympathetic or parasympathetic. Forget the parasympathetic right now, rest and digest. No, it's time for fight, flight, fright. Sympathetic secretes norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is going to act on the alpha receptors or the beta receptors. The beta 1 receptors are GS coupled. Translation, they will increase your cyclic EMP and that's huge. Beta 1 receptor is GS coupled adenylate cyclase to convert ATP into cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP has bazillion functions, but if you're talking about the muscles of your atria or ventricles, it's gonna boost the contractility. Here's the M3 receptor. This is parasympathetic for your lovely bronchioles. But if you're talking about the heart, it's the M2 receptor, which will cause bradycardia and decrease contractility. But we said we do not care about the parasympathetic in today's video. Let's focus on the sympathetic. Beta 1 or beta 2. Both of them are GS coupled. Translation, adenylate cyclase. There's an A here. ATP, and just click AMP, protein kinase A. And it depends. If you are in the heart, especially the heart muscles, you will increase calcium and you will increase contractility, hashtag beta 1. But beta 2 has a totally different function. Beta 2 will cause bronchodilation if you are in the lung, vasodilation if you are in the cardiovascular system. But today, we focus on dopamine and dobutamine. Beta 1 is gonna be the hero. So we are trying to increase cardiac contractility by stimulating beta 1 adrenergic receptors. How do inotropic agents work? Here is your adrenal medulla secreting epinephrine and norepinephrine. Here is your nerve ending secreting only norepinephrine. The nerve ending cannot make epinephrine. Why not? Because it lacks the last enzyme. It's called phenylethanolamine and methyltransferase. You cannot find it here, but you can absolutely find it in your adrenal medulla. That's why the adrenal medulla can give you epinephrine, but not the sympathetic nerve. Norepinephrine will work on the beta 1, epinephrine will stimulate beta 1 and beta 2. So, since we're talking about beta 1, regardless, it can be stimulated by norepinephrine or by epinephrine or by freaking dopamine or the dead gum dobutamine. Whatever stimulates the beta 1, it doesn't freaking matter because it's GS coupled. GS, adenylate cyclase, ATP, intocyclic AMP, protein kinase A. If we are talking about the cardiac muscles, we are increasing the contractility of your heart. But if you're talking about the blood vessel, we are relaxing the smooth muscles on your vessels. Those, this same cyclic AMP has two completely different functions in two different tissues. In the heart, it increased contraction, but in the vessels, it increased relaxation. The devil is in the details, the proof is in the pudding, and the epinephrine is in the adrenal medulla. Cyclic AMP has become my spirit animal. It has no lack of functions. Look at this. It can increase your HDL, your good cholesterol. It can decrease your triglycerides, can decrease inflammation, decrease smooth muscle proliferation, increase endothelial repair, decrease platelet aggregation, and 
regarding contraction i will increase contraction in the cardiac muscle i will decrease contraction in the smooth muscle dopamine or dobutamine will stimulate beta 1 and increase contractility in your cardiac muscle that's why we use them in chf we can also use dobutamine to stimulate the contraction of the cardiac muscle and we use this in the cardiac stress test if we cannot read the akg and if you cannot exercise if you cannot run on the treadmill we can inject you with dobutamine this will stimulate the contraction of the heart and then we do echocardiography and then we can notice if there is any sign of ischemia here's the slide that's going to make history this is part of my cardiac pharmacology course available at medicosisperfectionalis.com this is your cardiac muscle, okay? It has primary ATPase, secondary ATPase. Great. What's the normal function of the primary ATPase? Sodium out, potassium in. Great. And then dependent on the primary ATPase, there is secondary because it's secondary to the primary. Great. When sodium accumulates on the outside, sodium is going to push themselves to the inside and calcium is going to exit. When calcium exits, calcium here is going to enter. Yeah, hashtag balance, hashtag homeostasis. And then calcium is inside the muscle of the heart. Calcium will go, and we call this phenomenon calcium-induced calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And this calcium, actin, myosin, you know the rest of the story, hashtag contraction of the cardiac myocyte. How can we boost this contractility? Easy, you get rid of the secondary active transport so that calcium can only enter but cannot leave. It cannot exit, you inhibit the secondary. But if you wanna inhibit the secondary, it's a very good idea to inhibit the primary because the secondary was dependent on the primary. Brilliant, who does that? Freaking digoxin. And since it inhibits the sodium potassium ATPase, potassium will not go in, it will accumulate on the outside, hashtag hyperkalemia. Great, how else can you boost the contractility? You can give dobutamine or isoproterenol or even dopamine, they will stimulate the beta-1 adrenergic receptor, it's GS-coupled, adenylate cyclase, ATP into cyclic AMP, and then protein kinase A. Protein kinase A will open the calcium channel in the cardiac myocyte, calcium-induced calcium release, boom, contraction. Catecholamines such as dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine have the exact same function. Can I get calcium channel blockers in CHF? Shut up! Why not? Calcium channel blockers, they will block the calcium channel. Now, no calcium will enter the heart, and your heart is already weak with a low ejection fraction, so stop it. Whoever said pharmacology is hard has never watched my videos. Dopamine versus dobutamine. Dopamine versus dobutamine. Dopamine is an agonist to the D1 and D2, but dobutamine is not. If you are an agonist to D1 and D2, you can relax the renal vascular smooth muscles and increase kidney perfusion, which is very good. Because let me tell you, man, if you have CHF and you have low perfusion, your kidney is screwed. So it's very good actually to increase the kidney perfusion. Great. But dobutamine is very strong on the beta 1 and beta 2, especially beta 2 has vasodilation and hypotension. So dobutamine can cause hypotension, dopamine cannot. Since both of them have beta 1 stimulation, they can boost the cardiac contractility, which is the point of today's video. Whether you give dopamine, dobutamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, or isoproterenol, any of them can stimulate beta-1, GS, ATP, cyclic AMP, increase contractility in your heart. Boom. So the moral of the story is dopamine can increase your blood pressure, but dobutamine cannot. Why not? Because dobutamine has beta-2 agonist properties. If you are beta-2, you will vasodilate. When you vasodilate, you will lower the blood pressure, not raise it. Also, there is another crucial difference. Dopamine increases renal perfusion, but dobutamine does not. Why not? Because dobutamine lacks D1 or D2 agonist effects. So here are two cases for you. Case number one, you have a patient with CHF, hypotension, and poor kidney perfusion. Should you give dopamine or dobutamine? Case number two, patient has CHF, no hypotension. Should you give dopamine or dobutamine? Please pause. And the answers are, for the first one, you give dopamine because there is low blood pressure and there is poor kidney perfusion. But for the next one, you give dobutamine. Why dobutamine? Because dobutamine cannot lower the blood pressure. It might even raise it. 
So here is the mnemonic. Dopamine can increase blood pressure, but dobutamine does not. Why not? Because it has beta 2, so it vasodilates. Dopamine can increase your renal perfusion, but dobutamine does not. Why not? Because it lacks D1 and D2 agonism. Dopamine and dobutamine are drugs that are used in CHF. This was just a sample of my cardiac pharmacology course available at medicosisperfectionalis.com. This lovely course has 50 videos about cardiac pharmacology. You can use the promo code CARDIOFARM50 to get a 50% discount. Also, you can get my antibiotics course has 40 videos on my website. Thank you for watching. Smash like, subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. You can email me here. Get my cardiac pharmacology course here. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionals, where medicine makes perfect sense.